A year ago I reviewed the Network Acoustics Eno streaming system. Now they introduced a further developed filter and cable called Muon. Given the results with the Eno I was immediately interested and while testing I did some interesting discoveries. The Muon network filter, like the Eno from the same manufacturer, is used to clean up the network signal to improve the sound quality. Let's see where it should be used. Your stereo probably contains an amplifier and network player, or an amplifier with built-in network player, that drives a set of loudspeakers. The muon is then connected to the network connector on the network player or streaming amplifier using the fixed cable of the muon. The network connector on the other side is then connected to the router using a separate muon network cable. Your computer or NAS is also connected to your router, so music from it can be read by the streamer. It's even better to use a normal domestic switch in between the router and the muon since that produces less noise. Like audio file switches, the functioning of the Ethernet filtering is not taken seriously by network specialists. From their standpoint an Ethernet signal is well protected and if it wouldn't work flawlessly, doing purchase online or transferring money online would frequently go wrong. And that's not the case. Why then do audio files hear a difference? According to those network specialists it's a placebo effect. But that's because they are network specialists and not audio specialists. For even when all bits arrive intact at the DAC, which they usually will, there are several causes why during the digital to analog conversion things go wrong. That all boils down to timing errors caused by noise and limited bandwidth leading to distortion of the analog signal that carries the digital signal information. I made several videos on the subject. For instance, the sound of network switches. See the link in the top right corner and in the show notes. Let me show you a brief excerpt from this video here again. All digital techniques work with stepped processes, like a mechanical clock that steps to a minute in 120 half second movements of the escapement. Digital techniques have a crystal oscillator as escapement, which makes sure that going through the steps happens at a regular interval. In this graph those intervals are drawn by vertical dotted lines and a digital signal then looks like this. At least in theory, in practice those intervals are not really as constant as we would like. That becomes visible when on an oscilloscope the traces are superimposed. This animation shows what happens. We see the vertical lines get wider since they vary in timing. Sometimes the vertical movement, both up and down, are earlier or later. This phenomenon is known as jitter. Within limits this is no problem for data transport. Even if it goes wrong and a bit is missed, the error correction is able to repair that bit or even more than one bit. And when the error correction is confronted with too many faults to repair, the receiving side simply asks the sender to resend the package. Up till now we have seen perfect square waves, but these never happen for it would require unlimited bandwidth. They will at least have rounded corners, but to explain the problem at hand I drew what can happen in a very exaggerated way. I have drawn two horizontal lines that indicate the threshold for the electronics to decide if there is a polarity change. The upper vertical line is for upgoing voltage and the lower for downgoing voltage. The vertical dotted lines show that the moment in time the voltage change is detected has moved to the right thus later in time. This again is no problem if it is as constant as shown here. The problem gets more serious when we combine the distorted waveform with phase noise. Now the detection of the voltage change can be at the moment of the dotted vertical red line, but just as good at the second red line and the difference in between them again shows the jitter. 
If we then add a less stable power rail, you see that the waveform also vary in amplitude, the vertical axis. Because of the rounded shape of this waveform, not only the variations in time domain, the horizontal axis, but also the variations in amplitude, the vertical axis, change the moment the voltage change is detected. Still, for data transport this would not be a problem if these errors are within the defined limits. Let's make the deviation more visible by copying the distances between the vertical lines to these green dotted lines and move them to about the middle of the jittered signal of the first half cycle. Now look at the other cycles and you see a nice stable clock is gone. And this is a relatively static representation. In real life all parameters can constantly change. But normally this would not harm data integrity during transport or storage. So what can go wrong then? Jitter, for that is what we talk about, can only harm at two places in the audio chain during analog to digital conversion and during digital to analog conversion. The analog to digital conversion is done in the studio and thus beyond our control. But the digital to analog conversion is, so let's see what happens there. The digital player, being a CD player, streamer, network bridge and the like, reads series of voltages that are registered on CD or in an audio file in binary form and renders these voltages to an analog signal. I use here a straight line as analog signal for educational reasons. Normally a straight line is most unlikely in audio. You can see that when the plotted voltages are connected by a line, it results in a perfectly straight line. This is the function of the reconstruction filter that evens out the voltage changes faster than a bandwidth of half the sampling frequency rate would allow. Watch my video Digital Audio Pulses are not real world, sine waves are, for more information. As soon as the timing is off, like so, the line is no longer straight. This is how jitter causes distortion in the analog signal. Depending on the spectrum of the jitter, at what frequencies the jitter modulates the digital stream, the impact of the sound quality will vary. If the jitter is at general consumer equipment level, Harshness is quite common. Also deep lows can fully disappear. The stereo image is usually quite poor while the transients sound rather disappointing. With streamers at the level of my setup too, harshness is clearly less to a level that it doesn't any irritate anymore. Lows are more defined, voices start sounding more natural with only sibilance being slightly audible. Digital sources at the level of my setup 1 have instruments and voices more separated and projected in a virtual space. Transients make for instance a picked guitar sound in front of the speakers and a piano sound far more dynamic. When there is no sound, there really is no sound. Described in the audiophile world as black background. This phenomenon is hard to explain other than it can shock people. I link this to time smearing, where the energy of a pulse is smeared over a longer time span. There are several ways to clean up a network signal in a way that the digital to analog conversion is less pestered by jitter. One is to modify or develop a network switch that filters out common mode noise and improves clocking. See my playlist Audio Grade Network Switches for reviews. A year ago it appeared to be possible to achieve great results using a passive filter as the network acoustics Eno system proved. And now from the same developer a further improved system, at least according to network acoustics. The enclosure is made from non-magnetic ABS plastic rather than using a metal housing that can influence the filter. It measures 193 by 79 by 54 mm, has a 450 mm long cable on one side that is terminated with a Telegardner gold plated RJ45 connector. On the other side there is a Nutrig PCB mounted RJ45 connector. It weighs only 295 grams. 
Network acoustics claim to filter out electric and radio frequency noise by using a pure silver filter system that does not use chokes, inductors, capacitors or resistors. It's all hand wired using 99.99% ultra pure Ono continuous casting UPOCC copper conductors with carbon shielding. The same goes for the internet cable that, like the filter, uses Telegardner gold plated RJ45 connectors. Both the cable and the cable end of the filter use a segregated core construction where the two pairs each have their own shielding. This also means that it is a 100 megabit per second system and that is deliberately. 100 megabit per second is more than sufficient for audio applications and it sets the interface electronics in the network player in a less noisy mode. By the way, there are also high end network players that limit themselves to 100 megabit per second for the same reason. I used my reference setup 1A throughout the entire test. Here the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier drives the AudioPhysics Scorpio loudspeakers over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The digital source now is the Grim Audio Mu1 that is a Rune server, Rune endpoint, reclocker and scaler in one. It is connected to the Core Dave DAC over Siltec AES EBU cable. The analog connection between the DAVE and the AMP is over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The network acoustic Nuon streaming system that comprises of the Nuon Ethernet filter and a Nuon streaming Ethernet cable is connected between the Grim Audio Mu1 and a 25 Euro TP-Link TLSG108 domestic switch since it would not be fair to test it with the SOTM SNH10G audio file network switch that is normally used here. The new one was compared to a normal CAT6 patch cable and although there was a slight improvement in both spatial information and sibilance, it was not what I remembered when I tested the Eno, the simpler model, on the Aurelic Ares G2. And certainly not worth the money in this setup. So I replaced the new one with the Eno and again the result was far from what I remembered from the test with the Ares G2. The digital signal in the Mu1 is cleaned up and when switched on scaled to 192 kHz sampling so I switched off the scaler, but that only showed the effect of the scaler. And for if you wonder, I used both Tidal and Cobus as source so it's not because the audio was coming from the internal SSD that stores my music. So I connected the Dave using the USB output on the Mu1 using the Network Acoustics Eno USB cable I have been using for some time now. The USB on the Mu1 is directly connected to the Intel NUC i3 board in the Mu1, so the FPGA board is not in the signal path. Again, the effect of both the Nuon and the Eno was minor. I don't know what Grim Audio exactly have done to make the Mu1 so insensitive to Ethernet pollution, but I do know they have some RFI and EMI specialists aboard. That's great for listening music but slightly complicated for a reviewer wanting to review Ethernet filters and switches. Since I had to sell the Ares G2 to be able to, to buy the Grim Audio, I used the network bridge that is normally in my setup 2A, the Allo US bridge signature with Digi1 signature board in the metal housing and powered by the Bipower Allo Shanti linear power supply. See the link for my review. Now things get more normal again. I started off with the Eno to see if the experiences from the past can be found again. And they did. Then I compared it to the new one on test here. Although the Eno is already very good, the new one brings further improvement in timing, offers a slightly deeper stereo image with more focus but not in an unnatural way and above all it sounds very at ease when appropriate and dynamic when needed and the differences will probably be even greater with a more upmarket network player like the Ares G2. The Nuon system appears to be a further development of the enigmatic technology by Network Acoustics. Although first experiences gave another impression. 
The Grim Audio Mu1 surprised me again in that it apparently is very insensitive to Ethernet pollution. I have not yet come across another player that doesn't sound better using an audiophile network switch or Ethernet filter. I would certainly not presume that your network player or bridge has that same quality. But there is no need to keep that question open since Network Acoustics offers a 30 day try at home money back guarantee. Which is a good policy since the Muon filter will set you back around 1560 euros including VAT while a 1 meter Nuon streaming cable costs around 1200 euros including VAT. It is clear that this is set of 1A territory. If you are in that territory and you can spare the money, at least try it for it is a very good product that can drastically improve the streaming quality in most cases. And that brings us to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.